Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, I'm going to explain Python exception handling using try, accept, and finally blocks. So I created this data file. It's called data.txt, and within that, we have five rows of comma separated numbers, and most of them are integers. But we can see that in line two here, we have a decimal, a floating point value 2.9, and in line four, we slipped in an x. There's an x instead of a number. So let's look at our Python code. We have a file named data.txt. We're going to open that file name with open file name as fn. So our file handle is fin. For line and fin, in other words, for each line in the file that we read in, we're going to split the items at the commas so that we have items as a list of the numbers in that row. And then I want to do a total for each row of the integers. So we're going to convert each item in each row to an integer and we're going to tally them up. So we're going to set total equal to zero initially. And then for item in items, we're going to iterate through the items. And then for each item, we're going to convert it to a number, an integer, using the int function. And we're going to add the, to the total and print the total at the very end. So pretty straightforward, read in the rows one by one, convert the items that for that row to an integer, and add up the total and print it out. So let's see what happens when we run this. So as expected, we got an error. Look, it printed out correct answer for the first row, total is 117, but then we got this value error and it says 2.9 it doesn't recognize and it found that in line 10 of our code. So let's flip back to the code. In our code line 10 as expected trying to convert to an integer it couldn't convert 2.9 to an integer which is on the second line of our data. So if we want to make our program more robust we want to try and keep it from locking up and stopping in execution. We can wrap some of the code that throws errors inside of a try except block. So we'll put a try block here. This for loop is where we're getting the error when we try to convert an item to an integer. So if we put that part of the code inside of a try block and then we put an except, if we get an error while we're trying that, we'll print out an error message. And we'll just basically print out error converting to integer, and then we'll print out that whole row of, of data. So let's try that and see how that works. Okay, now we're getting lines 1, 3, and 5 are all printing out correctly. Our program does still throw two errors. In line 2, it shows error converting to integer, and we can see why, because there's a 2.9 in that row. And in line 4, we know there's the x in that row. So we've successfully solved the problem of handling errors for the two rows that have invalid data that we're unable to convert. Now another thing we could do is wrap try accept blocks around other types of errors. So if we put our whole program inside of a try block with an accept error opening file. So in case we have an invalid file name, we'll try and open it but if we get an exception, we can print error opening file and then file name. So you notice we have two different error messages. And we give you a little bit of data. Here we give the file name that you were trying to open. Here we give the row of the items that you were trying to uh, convert to an integer. So the more data you can provide to the user, the easier it will be for him to figure out what the problem was. But this keeps our program from locking up. Now here where we only have one file name, we don't really need to have error handling. But if you're going to have the end user enter a file name, or if you have a long list of file names that you want to open one by one and do some operations on, uh, you wouldn't want the program to lock up mid-execution and stop executing. It would be nice if it could handle the exception or the error with one bad file name and continue to process the rest of the files. So that's what this try and accept block will do. Now another thing we can do is add a finally block. It's optional. We can add finally or we can not add finally. But if we add finally, 
the finally block is going to execute no matter what. So this is our finally block, and this is going to always execute after the try and accept blocks. So whether or not accept executes, finally will always execute. Accept will only execute if there's an error in the try block. So here we have two separate try blocks. You'll see this try block and this accept, and then this outer try block and the outer accept, and the finally. So let's run this program and see how that works. So the finally block you can see here at the bottom. You can also still see that we sample the same two errors in uh, lines 2 and 4. Now if we get the wrong file name, you see that we get an error opening file and the finally block still executes. Another thing you can do in try accept blocks is in the accept block you can list specific errors that you want to try to catch. So if you if you list a specific error where here we know we're going to get a divide by zero error, we say accept zero division error as error. And then ERR is an error message. And our error message that we print out will be um, handling runtime error and then error. So let's run this and see what we get. And we get handling runtime error division by zero. So the division by zero text is actually provided by the zero division error in this variable. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.